Hey everybody, welcome back to my Craftoria world where we've been learning all about modern industrialization and how to automate it. I've been a ways through this mod before, but never fully automated it. This time I'm using mostly MI to do all the automation. And what I have so far, even since the last episode, involves hours of learning, setup, and AFK time. I think we've reached a stage here where watching me craft and set up everything is way too much. That would just take forever. So instead, I'll set things up the best I can, then talk through some of the processes and what I've learned. Sound good? Let's talk about automation. Stick around. Please give me a few seconds to thank our sponsor, Apex Hosting. If you're thinking about starting your own Minecraft server, Apex Hosting is a great way to go. With their always on servers, you can invite your friends to join at any time with no port forwarding setups and setting up mod packs like this one is a breeze with their one click installations. Plus they offer 24 seven support to help with any issues and they'll handle mod pack upgrades for you. If you do check them out, please use my link, jangro.com apex, which helps support the channel. Thank you for your support. All right, let's get back to it. Here's a look at my entire modern industrialization setup, and we'll go through this in some detail. It's actually not everything. There's a whole set of automations behind that wall. I'll show you that later too. In case you haven't seen my previous videos, I'm using functional storage for items and some fluid storage, as it is very manageable, compact, and wireless. You can do all of this with modern industrialization barrels and tanks if you want to. I just find this a bit easier. So while all these drawers are available in my AE2 network for easy crafting, I also have this very visual representation of my progress, what items I have, and what I still need to automate. And as I start to work with any new materials, I just add a new set of drawers, and it kind of acts as my checklist of what I need to craft, how much of it I have, and what I need to automate. And because we can set controller access points around, like there, over here, it saves a ton on running cables and pipes all over the place. So I feel like this is a pretty good compromise between experiencing MI for what it is intended to be and quality of life. So I don't go completely insane running pipes all over the place. So taking a closer look at the drawers here, I'm collecting dust for the major metals that I'm using to craft all these kind of parts and components. And each of these drawers, these two by two drawers hold 512 of each. So I'm making 512 and relying on storage the storage drawers to stop production when I have full drawers. I've upgraded some of these things where the dusts are accumulating higher than 2K, a one by one holds 2K. And for things that are more expensive or I don't need as many, I'm downgrading the drawers. We'll talk about these later. Iron downgrade on these drawers is 64 items. So 512 of all these things might be overkill, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty cool to have all this stuff handy and it comes for free because these resources we're getting for free thanks to these quarries. Now I added a second quarry. They're both running bronze drills. They're eating up bronze drills pretty quickly. I've got eight in each one right now. I'm automatically processing most of these ores. That's why some of these are set to zero. They're all going into this macerator here with these pipes. You can see here, we're processing these four automatically. And as they get generated by the quarries, they end up as dusts in our system here, and we're automatically turning them into all of these components. And out here is kind of my work area. I've got machines for just about everything. Again, I've been spending hours and hours filling up these drawers, understanding what it takes to craft them, and ultimately identifying what's most painful and what I need to automate. So, you know, I've got compressors and macerators and furnaces and mixers and bending and cutting machines, and I've been doing all this manually filling these drawers, identifying that I really do need to automate all this stuff. These are all up at 512, mostly. You can see this right here is automatically filling this drawer with, with copper ingots. How is it doing that? Let me show you. Back here is the automation room. So everything I'm identifying is needing to be automated. I'm doing again in a much more organized fashion, completely automatically. I do have, I don't know, 10 bronze boilers now. I do need to upgrade to a multi-block boiler pretty soon, but we're not there yet. This is doing just great. Now here are individual assembly lines for the different metals and I've automated so far, copper, bronze, iron, and steel. So right here, you can see this thing is making, is taking copper dust and automatically turning it into ingots. And this one makes bolts, this one makes rods, this one makes rings, this one makes curve plates, this one makes plates, and this one makes ingots out of copper dust. 
Now, these functional storage stores simplifies this assembly line quite a bit because pulling what it needs out of it with these three sets of pipes, well, one is steam. So for example, this one is set to pull curved plates and rods. This is actually a steel packer. This is a later machine that's only available in steel. But this one right here, for example, just takes ingots, takes ingots in and turns them into rods. And then when the rods are done, it puts them back out into the network. So that's where you see all these drawers getting filled up. We've got some automation happening over here with an assembler. There's a preview. We'll talk about that later. So all these different banks of machines are set for the different types of metal. They're all set up pretty much the same way. And so it's a really nice modular way to keep all of these items in stock. Some of the metals have slightly different parts. For example, iron doesn't have a curved plate. So I just put a second furnace in this block here just to speed up the production of iron ingots. And I'm leveraging for the most part this feature where you can set the capacity and I'm just having them mostly on the minimum numbers. That way I'm not storing yet another stack of items in each of these machines. So it's only gonna store as many as I've allowed it to in here. So with this setup, no matter what I use of these items, they pretty much get replenished right away. In most cases, 512 of each components, I can craft what I need. These machines will pretty quickly replenish them. I haven't even upgraded them to steel yet. I'm not even sure it's necessary for these components because they work fast enough. Let's watch that in action. Let's make some more bronze drills. So you can see I've got all the bronze stuff here and I wanna make some more bronze drills. I need some more bronze drill heads. I haven't automated bronze gears yet. That's easy. And we'll make some drills which require iron gears. So there's quickly 20 bronze drills. And now all these things, except for the gears, because I haven't automated those yet, it's just going to start regenerating. So you can see here we're getting this bronze dust turning into bronze ingots, and these bronze ingots are getting turned into rods, which are getting turned into bolts. Pretty amazing. Let's go put these drills in here. Can't wait to automate this. And to automate drills, we're going to need assemblers, which puts us squarely into the electric age. To get started with electricity, we need to make a steam turbine, which I have right here. The steam turbine is pretty complicated to craft. Look at this. It has stuff we've never seen before. These analog circuits, motors, the analog circuits have these other components, inductors, resistors, capacitors, analog circuit board, copper wire, and these motors, steel rods, and magnetic steel rods, cables. So there's a lot of crafting we need to do with this. And I did a lot of that manually all right here. Part of this process is getting these rubber sheets. And rubber sheets come from right here at the steel mixer with synthetic oil and paper mixed together. That gives us those sheets. To get synthetic oil, we need to burn raw synthetic oil in the blast furnace. I'm making raw synthetic oil over here. That is coke dust mixed with water in a, in a mixer. That's coming out of here, going into our functional storage. And here's where I'm using storage tanks. This is where the raw synthetic fluid is going. It's getting piped into a new fluid input hatch on my blast furnace. That stuff is getting burned into synthetic oil, which is going into this drawer in our network. And we can just grab that oil out from over here, from this controller, in this pipe, into the mixer. And you can see here, we just got a little bit of oil. It's making these rubber sheets and that's getting stored in this oak drawer right here. These sheets are needed for crafting cables. They're the insulation on the cables. They're needed for a bunch of these components as well. Now we've made a steam turbine. We put it down here. This is a copper cable. There are different tiers of electricity, low voltage, medium voltage, and high voltage. We're just sticking to low voltage for now. Different machines later on require higher tiers. There's three different cables, I think, for low voltage, copper and tin being two of them. Uh, but I've been making copper and tin cable, and that's made with these copper wires, the rubber sheets to make those cables. We're making the wire in these wire mills. Here's, here's a steel wire mill. If we take some tin sheets, for example, we can watch that work. That's where we get tin wire from. And over here, I have an electric wire mill. While steel and bronze machines, we could speed up and overclock with gunpowder, electric machines, you cannot do that. 
they automatically overclock. The more of the same item that you craft in an electric machine increases the efficiency with every single one. And if we stop it, it kills the efficiency. Or if we put another recipe in here, it kills the efficiency. So because of that mechanic, for a lot of the high production items that we're doing, we're going to want to have dedicated electric machines for things. So there's an electric machine for just about every single one of the bronze machines, plus a few more. For example, one of the first things you're going to want to make is this polarizer. That allows us to, for example, craft polarized rods, these right here, put steel rods in here. It will make these polarized steel, these magnetized steel rods. Those we can make by hand with redstone, so we don't need the polarizer for this, but another one is this Cooper nickel magnetized wire. The only way you can make this is in the polarizer. So, so far, these are the only electric machines I've made with the exception of the assemblers. Again, let's take a look at what it takes to craft a steam turbine. Well, let's look at a different one. Let's look at an assembler. Here's what it takes to craft an assembler. All of these crazy components, robot arms, analog circuits, basic machine hulls, conveyors. Each of these things is a crazy amount of crafting. So for example, the analog circuit is resistors, inductors, capacitors, analog circuit boards, and copper wire. And this machine hull, has analog circuits in it, steel machine casing, tin cable, these redstone batteries. So batteries require these uh, battery alloy metals, which I've started crafting here. That's made by mixing tin and lead, I think. We're going to get a bunch of these different dusts from mixing other dusts. So some of them come from free from raw materials. Some are mixtures of other materials like this uh, battery alloy. And the Cooper nickel right here is copper and nickel, obviously. So I have a iron upgrade on these, sorry, an iron downgrade on these drawers because I don't want to have 2000 of each of these things, which would require at least 4,000 of those other dusts. So I'm just keeping these stocked at a much lower level, but I'll set up mixers to automatically mix these and automatically fill them up. That's one of my next projects in that automation room in the back. Once we craft our first assembler, I used my first one to automate the crafting of these resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And let me show you how I did that right over here. This assembler right here is crafting all three of those. This one's doing nothing right now. I've got this one set up to assemble all three of these things. Now an assembler can craft up to three different patterns, as long as you can get all of the ingredients in there. So I've got it set up for a resistor, inductor, and a capacitor. These are all of the ingredients. They're kind of shared. This, I think, is the resistor. We just take a look at the resistor. Inductor is just a bunch of copper wire and steel rods, and the capacitor is copper wire, gold plates, rubber sheets. So I've got these slots all locked to each of these items, and these ones right here, I have a capacity set to zero. By the way, I've been setting these capacities with a scroll wheel, which is how you is how you set those. So you know you can scroll down and up. And I've been keeping the capacities fairly low so that this assembler doesn't just totally fill up with stacks of these things. Let's just take out a couple of these and we can watch this thing work. So if I take out some of these resistors, capacitors, and inductors, the assembler springs to action because the resistors that they had in them backfilled the drawers and it will craft each of these things. It'll craft whatever it can in this order. So if it needs if it needs like 512 resistors, it will never get to these until it finishes the resistors. So that's something you need to keep in mind with assemblers. Let's take a look at another assembler that I've got going on in here that I pointed to earlier. This assembler, I've got crafting copper gears and copper rotors. We needed iron gears before when we were making drills um, and bronze gears too. So here's how we can auto craft some of these parts that we can also craft you know, in a crafting table. But the benefit of using this is some of these things are more efficient and use less ingredients in an assembler versus a crafting table. So in a crafting table, we need four plates, four bolts and a ring. In an assembler, we just need a ring and four plates. However, we need soldering alloy. So I've got soldering alloy production happening. There's a pipe coming out of our functional storage network. 
I've got some soldering alloy dust right here in this drawer. Actually, I don't. So it's all used up, but it's locked to that drawer. If we make some soldering alloy dust, that is lead and tin. So if we take a stack of lead, which is right here, and a stack of tin, and put that in a mixer, like right here, now we're getting soldering alloy dust. It's actually automatically going into that blast furnace right here. Got this configured for soldering alloy dust. And this is crafting this soldering alloy and putting it back into the functional storage fluid drawer right here, which is available through the functional storage network which is why this functional storage network is so amazing. I don't have to run pipes from all the way over there to all the way over here. I just access it through this controller access point. So now this is filling up with soldering alloy and crafting these things. Pretty amazing. So in the same way, we can continue to automate. I'm going to put these assemblers down here for bronze and for steel and for iron. So I'll have always rotors and gears for each of the metals. And we'll continue automating all the different things for each of the metals down this line. I'm going to set up some mixers over here somewhere, automating all the things. And most importantly, setting up some drill automation. Let's just automate a drill head. I think we have space in this one right here so we can see how that works. So if we look at the drill, copper drill head, we use bronze drills in our quarries right now, but the copper drill head will give us different outputs, but we can just use this as an example. So I, I moved it over here into this slot, which locks it to this slot. We can edit the locking with this button here and the drill head itself needs plates, curved plates, bolts, rods, and gears. So we have plates. We need to put, let's see, bolts, curved plates, rods, gears. Now I'd set these things all to capacity zero, so it's not going to fill up with them. Let's look at how many of these we need. Oh, the assembler. One rod, two curved plates, two gears, one copper plate. So if we put this up to two, two, one, one. And the reason these aren't filling up is we need to add them to the filter here. And now they're filling up. And if we increase this to one, set these to zero, just need to make sure it has enough things to make it. There we go. And if we just, if we increase the capacity of this slot, it will cause it to craft more. We'll get one more and then it'll stop. There it goes. The reason it's taking so long in between is that we don't have enough soldering alloy. So it's pausing and while that fills up, I think it needs a hundred millibuckets to make one of these things. So we definitely need to get ahead of our soldering alloy production. And that'll do it. I hope that gave you a good idea of what this phase of modern industrialization is all about called the electric age. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.